All right, well, we, uh, we have a monster. We have the knife collection out. I think we are fit. I can get my arm in here <clears throat> for a knife collection update. All right, so it's been a very long time coming. Normally, I release these videos at the beginning of the year, but due to circumstances in my control, I decided not to because sort of stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> we will get started because it's gonna be a long ass video. I have not been into my collection for a while. I know that sounds weird, but I haven't really been collecting knives as much last year, but still, it'll be fun to go through here and see what we got. First and foremost, we will get a couple of the randoms out of the way. This, which is my cold steel, trench hawk um this i've actually cut myself on before I, I rarely cut myself on knives but this one i uh i actually have nice sharp edge it is a very very sharp knife it came very sharp from cold steel it's not actually a knife it's it's a tomahawk i wasn't paying attention when i sheathed it and i i decided to slip my finger and i still kind of have a scar from it next we have the cold steel koboom this is one of the first fixed blades i ever bought actually probably the first fixed blade i ever bought one of the first knives i bought my back is gonna be fucked up by the time i'm done with this i actually bought this on a recommendation from nothing fancy it's probably not the best thing to edc but Hey, what can you do? Another cold steel. I like cold steel fixed blades in case you couldn't tell. This is a cold steel GI Tanto. Hell yeah. It reminds me of something that uh, Leon would carry in uh, Resident Evil 4, which they are remaking, which I'm kind of hyped about that. Uh, sort of, not not exactly super hyped, but you know, it's it's a, it's it's happening. So one way or the other, why play it? Absolutely, I will absolutely play it. Uh, this I picked up from Walmart for dirt cheap. It is a Camellus, I don't know what the fuck it's called. Camellus Titanium, it's a Camellus, it's, it's something. I got it because it was kind of cool and it was cheap and I wanted to buy something and I bought it. <laughs> that's that's how most of this happens. You know, I just, I'm like, I see knife, me buy knife. Now onto a couple items that I actually carry. Well, first of all, what my EDC is for today. So my EDC for today is these two guys. We have the Spyderco Delica, which is just an all around awesome little knife. It's so good because it's so simple, if that makes sense, but I love it. I've been carrying one for forever. My brother's actually had two of them that he's lost because he's a fucking moron. And then just your standard Victor Knox tinkerer, which has all the tools you need. You got your blade, two blades. Um, I really like this one because it has a Phillips screwdriver, which is very useful. That's the reason why the tinkerer is the best Victor Knox. Hands down, I need more monster. This, my, this is my second monster today, so. And if we run out, we still have two more in the fridge and a cup of coffee that I brewed. That cup of coffee is probably gonna be disgusting because it's been sitting there for so long. This is the Spyderco Pacific Salt. Um, this is my normal knife that I carry when I go running because it's rust proof. Not necessarily rust proof, but rust resistant. For the most part, it won't rust on you. I like it because it's very lightweight. <clears throat> and when you're when I'm running, I sweat like a pig. So that's why I carry that. And my work knife is the Camellus Knives Keto. Flipper, it's all dusty because I do carry it. Man, that is so fucking disgusting. I gotta clean that guy off. But the Camellus Keto, yeah, look, you can see the dust on that plate, hold up. This is cool because, uh, well, I got it for free. So that's why I carry it for work in case I decide to dig it up. Um, but a really cool flipper. Flips really fast, perfect little EDC blade. Then we have the Exceed Design Tyrant. This one I put the carbon fiber scale onto it, but it is a, actually a utility blade. As you can see there, I got all sorts of gunk on the, uh, the blade because this was my moving in knife. I use it so much when I moved into my apartment, opening up all sorts of boxes and stuff, but I know some people have a thing against EDC and a, a utility knife or a uh, exchangeable utility blade. I like it because I don't have to sharpen the sucker and I am, I am extremely lazy, so that's why I carry this. Now into the case, this is gonna be kind of a disaster, so bear with me. Yeah, it's it's kind of a disaster. So, we'll set this boy over here. I guess we'll just start going through it. Random stuff first. Little Chris Reeve pouch for my Sabenza, which I don't really need. Oh God, where the fuck do we start? Let's start with some coins. There's a couple of the Illuminati ghost coins I tried to uh, patina. Didn't really work out too well, but yeah, kind of cool. And then we got a couple things from Pete's Pirate Life. Just some random coins, the little, uh, the best things in lives aren't things. Little little tokens that you're supposed to leave for people, which I ain't, I ain't fucking doing because they were probably pricey, expensive, and uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not giving anybody those. And a couple rare, rare Pete's Pirate Life coins. This is the V3, which I made a video on. I, I probably wouldn't buy stuff like this now because now that I have bills, but it was kind of fun to get back, back in the day. Another one of his limited coins. I, I don't remember the exact model that this one is, but I just get them because they were kind of cool to take pictures of and 
you know, helps spark your creativity. And my my long time carried Illuminati ghost money coin, which I don't I don't really carry this one anymore, but I probably should start because it is very cool. And then my uh, <laughs> the reason why I haven't been uploading many videos because I don't have money because of fucking Wall Street bets and the stock market, which I have so much money invested in now, and I've lost so much money because fuck Joe Biden. Anyway, no, I'm sorry. Let's go, Brandon. <clears throat> I have an Olight O pen, which is probably dead. Oh hey, look, look, works. Yay! It's a flashlight pen, which actually actually works pretty good. So that's all sorts of awesome. We got a Molini or Molini mob little bat. That guy's cool to take pictures of. Tons of photos of this guy on my Instagram. I got the exact variation I wanted. This will probably be the only one I ever buy just because they are fucking expensive, but they are really cool. Something else that was super expensive but is really cool is this MechForce Delta Core. Fidget spinner, I know, I know fidget spinners are so like, I don't know, what was it, 2016? But this is the absolute best fidget spinner that you can buy. It is heavy, it weighs so much. This is the, the stainless version. I think now they, they still make aluminum, but this boy has some weight to it. I regret spending so much money on it, but at the same time, I'm glad I have it because it's just, it's ridiculous. And we have a mech army spinner, which this one doesn't really work as good, but it's a copper and carbon fiber. So it has a pretty cool look to it, but it doesn't really spin the greatest. Pair of Dice from Clocks and Colors. Clocks and Colors is my favorite jewelry company ever. I'm wearing a necklace from them right now that you probably can't fucking see but right there. Yeah, they make, they make some really cool stuff and this is a set of stainless dice from them. Is that all the random little shit that we got around here? Oh, okay, here we go. Here's a pair of flame anode by me, flytanium scales. The colors really don't come through because I burnt the fuck out of them. I had these on my, uh, my Benjamin 51 for a while. I wasn't too big of a fan of them just because I like the lightweightness of the 51, so I don't really use them, but still, it's a uh, it's a thing. Ooh, here we go. A Microtech Marfion custom coin. I had taken a picture of this and put it up on IG. Come on, focus. Why don't you focus on it? If you don't follow my Instagram, you know where to find it. It's somewhere in the description. It says, success comes to those who hustle wisely. So make sure to hustle. Let's get to the cool thing. The, the cool elephant in the room is, uh, th this is like, this is a grail knife for me. It was my Microtech Halo 5. Best action out of any knife. This thing was a grail. It was so expensive. I am so glad I got one because it is a awesome, awesome knife. I never carry it for obvious reasons because it's kind of, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, but it, uh, it's such a cool blade. Like if you have the the chance or the opportunity to purchase a Halo of any any class Halo, get it. But this this battle worn burnt orange one is just it's probably the coolest variation that they make of it, other than like maybe an all blacked out version. And that Hellhound blade, mm, just perfection. It comes with its whole sheath. It's like ridiculous. It's like a gun, basically. Cool knife that is my EDC a lot of a lot of days is the Benchmade 51. I just completely mucked up the uh, the opening. But this appears in a ton of my videos just because it is such a awesome, awesome knife. Very lightweight. I, I prefer the lightweight battle songs other than the heavy ones just because they just work better for me. I do have a, a second one right here because I bought two because I'm insane. We do have a special variation of it that we'll get to in a second. I'll look at my pandemic knife. This is the pandemic hinder. This is my customized copper and carbon fiber Rick Hinder XM18. I, I don't I don't fucking know anymore. I don't I don't know my my models and knives, but this one was really cool. There's a video on it I think I made a long time, long time ago. If we get really close here, you can see that massive scratch on the blade that I got when I tried to sharpen it. That's just because I'm a dumbass, but it kind of adds character to it. Actually, I'm gonna stand up. This is actually easier. Here is a custom, not a custom, a rare Protec collaboration with Strider. Automatic, the teal handle, and that little, little insert there, an abalone insert, it's, it's awesome. This thing's cool. I'd seen it on uh, Blade HQ and I was like, I'm gonna snap it up, no pun intended, because it snaps open. <laughs> but it's it's a cool knife, it's expensive. I don't really carry it because it's kind of, mm, it's, it's too rare to carry. Which I shouldn't carry my rare knives, but oh, look, more more random fucking coins and stuff. Here's a copper nugget. It's just copper, just copper. One ounce, 99% fine copper. And then uh, a virus we don't talk about coin. Yeah, we don't we don't talk about that. This guy, if you follow my Instagram, you've been seeing I've been posting a lot of pictures of this lately. Um, I can't open this really because I, I suck at front flippers, but it's a little Kaiser Feist. It's a cool little knife. I love the look of it. It's just I, I suck at front flippers, so we don't really carry this one much. But the best tech fractal, right? Probably. I know I made a video on this. I, I got a chance to check out the rainbow version of this, which actually was pretty cool. Like I thought it was a, a pretty cool color variation of it, but just the normal carbon fiber and titanium. Works a little bit better in my opinion, but still the uh, the rainbow one's cool if you want a little bit of color, 
a color splash. We got two Benchmade 940 Osborns. The first one here has the copper scales on it. This one I actually carried for quite a while and it got some nice coloration on there. It's a heavy boy. Like this, this guy weighs quite a bit, but it works really well. I just did not like the, the regular green scales. I When I took them off, me and my brother had the kind of destroy the old scales because yeah I, but i didn't like him anyway um then we have a bladies q exclusive jade version of it which this thing is super light like this is so lightweight it's kind of stupid like it just disappears in your pocket and it's an awesome knife i don't have much wear on it just because limited edition knives i i, I kind of have a thing about not carrying them I, mean, I should carry them because no no reason to not carry them this is a cheap ass little knife that i got from amazon a long time ago it's a paratrooper knife made by fury so it's, it's not really the most high-end thing, but it got a cool opening mechanism where it's that, that sort of dealio right there. Paratroopers carried them in World War II, and I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. They're as strong as a fixed blade. Nope. Oh, here's a fixed blade. If you really want a fixed blade, the Spartan Enyo. I never carry this just because I, I, don't, I don't really carry fixed blades, but this guy's just one piece of metal. Very cool, very minimalist blade. I'm not a super big fan of the sheath, but if you're looking for a tiny little EC blade, it'd probably work fine. And just get it, I don't, I don't fucking know. Look at this whole case, everything. There's like an imprint of everything in my case. This is some model of Swiss Army knife that my dad got my name engraved in it, so I don't carry it. It's just kind of a keepsake. We have two of the Gerber EABs, just because I don't know why I bought two. I was on a kick for a while of just getting exchangeable blade knives like this, but ones that looked cool and that you could actually use that weren't just like a husky, your normal carpet cutting knives. I, I want something that kind of looked cool. And these things you can carry and not really feel embarrassed about that you're just carrying a box cutter around. There's a little Gerber curve I have for absolutely no reason. I never carry this. It's got a little blade on it and tools and whatnot. It actually locks, which is kind of interesting. It has a little locks on the side of it, so it's whatever. Can't remember the model on this or the exact name of it, but it's a little Kershaw, a little out the front manual. And I actually showed this to my mom and she liked it so much, I gave her my original and then bought a second one. She doesn't really like knives, but I was like, you gotta have this. It's like, it's so cool. And she was like, oh, that's so cute. So. I gave her mine and bought a second one. We have the awesome Kershaw Lucha. This thing, this, if you're looking for a first time ballad song, that's not gonna break the bank. That's absolutely awesome. Get a Kershaw Lucha. They actually sent this one to me to review. And I mean, it's, it's so cool. Like it's heavy, it, it got a heavy weight to it, so flippers will love it. As far as the build quality and the smoothness, it's one of the smoothest battle songs I've ever used. I think it has a bearing system, I'm pretty sure it does. It's been a while, and it's sharp. Like it is super sharp. So definitely if you're looking for a battle song, look at the Kershaw Lucha. Cause you, it's it's like 130 or something. It's and I think they even have some new versions of it out now. It's been a while since I've looked, but they got some cool stuff. Okay, let's see. I'll just start top to bottom here. We'll save the pens at last because people always like to bitch when I show off my pens. They're like, ooh, show a pen collection. I do have one more pen I should. Where, what actually pen goes in there? I don't fucking know. Here's a pen. It's a big crystal. You happy now? Bitch your head off. I have like a Pete's Pirate Life pen somewhere. All right. This knife, number one, is a Strider SMG. This is my EDC for a very long time because it was one of the first high-end knives I actually bought. I believe Strider kind of stopped making knives now, but this is, so this is kind of like a holy grail sort of knife to me. Um, I carried this and fidgeted with it so much. I love the sound it makes too. It's like, it's it's a cool knife, but I passed up getting an Arctic Grey one and I, I kick myself every day for that because I, I love my Strider. And then we have a Chris Reeves Sabenza in Damascus and wood. I can't remember the exact wood on this. That Damascus pattern is just awesome. Sabenzas are just cool. I know for a while Sabenza, Striders, and Hinders were kind of like the holy trinity of blades. I don't know, like there's so many knives out now that I kind of, have lost touch with them, but this is still a, a grail piece in my collection. This and like the Halo 5. And my first hinder that I got actually, this had blue scales on it, but my pandemic hinder came with black, so I switched them because I prefer the black scales on here, but it's the Warren Cliff blade. I almost think that this is a little bit smoother than my newer hinder. It costs more money, but I, it's probably because it doesn't have the coating on it. So, but I mean, both of them are solid knives and like until you've actually handled a hinder, you don't really know you can't appreciate the build quality on them. I mean, I'm sure maybe now there's some stuff that can rival it that for cheaper, but hey, this is, this at the time I bought it was the grail knife. So, and here's another grail knife that I got that the story behind this, I don't really know what happened to the guy. It was the Phantom Steelworks Skinwalker. I'm not sure what happened to the designer. From what I know, he just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. And uh, I got this secondhand off eBay. So I want to do some more investigate and research to see if I can find out what happened to Chris Martin. But for now, I have this in my collection. 
which it looks like some sort of alien artifact. Like, I, I never really carried it. I think I carried it like once. It's not really an FDU carry, it's just more of a cool little collection thing. Then we have a Warren Thomas Baby Bushido prototype, which I actually got from another YouTuber on here without even knowing it, because I had bought it and then posted a video and then a guy responded back and he's like, hey, you have my knife. And I'm like, oh yeah, I do, because there's like some actual like little things and stuff that match up to his video and I'm like that is kind of cool but all titanium blade this knife weighs nothing basically it's kind of ridiculous can't really flip it open that good because it has no weight to it but it has a carbonized edge on the blade or else it wouldn't hold an edge because it's titanium titanium is soft as fuck so you almost need that the one knife that everyone keeps asking me to sell is the Bradley Camara 2 this is like one of the originals I bought this knife so long ago and it was like 80 bucks now I'd probably charge like 400 bucks for it. I'm sure that someone would actually pay pay for it. But at the time, this was like, this was the thing. There's way better butterfly knives out now. I would say the Kershaw Lucha is way better. They do make another version of the Bradley Camaro too, but this one I believe is made by Kershaw and the new one is made by Baron Sons. I could be wrong with that, but I just know this is a really, really good knife, really heavyweight, tons of machining going on in the handle and it's mine. I'll probably sell it if I, if I need rent money someday. Here's a Hogue EX-01. This I'd seen in the, the front of a knife catalog. I can't remember the exact catalog, but I had to have it because it was just so cool. Uh, this is so chunky, and the sound it makes when it opens up is just a, it's a thwuck. Like, it opens up with authority, and it got such a thick blade. It's a thick, chunky boy. Except, the only thing I don't like is the stupid spoon clip. It's like, come on, really? Just shave it down. I almost want to take it to a grinder and shave it down because it looks so stupid. This is the Dagger Arrow. Very unique looking knife. I don't know much about dagger knives. They make some really cool, cool looking things. I believe they're a Russian <laughs> company, so you probably, uh, probably can't get them anymore because people are, you know, the fucking boycott Russia, which I don't, for good reason, who knows. But it has a really cool skull pocket clip on it. It looks like a screaming skull. That's kind of cool. Very cool looking symmetrical knife. Like it got kind of a, a symmetrical design to it. Here's another 51 that I have. This is my third 51. This is the Blade HQ exclusive green and blue. I got this as a, uh, a birthday present to myself because, you know, spend money on yourself. But this one, I would say flips. It's a little bit smoother than the regular 51s. I don't know what the reasoning is for that, but both of them are good. They're both fine. I almost like the design of the original 51 with the, the milled out like long channels versus the holes, but holes drilled knives kind of look a little, yeah, a little cheaper to me, but yeah, whatever. You can tell I'm hyped up on caffeine. This, this is my second monster today. I need it just to get enough energy to make this video. Plus I'm extremely out of practice, extremely out of practice making YouTube videos. So <clears throat> we'll get back to it. Benchmade Griptilian. I love the sound of Griptilian because it just has such a unique click to it. And I think it has to do with its handles, the handle material and just the Omega spring system. But this guy was, I've carried this guy a lot. The Benchmade Griptilians are just, they're the bee's knees. I have a mini one somewhere. Oh, there it is. The mini grip. The mini grip's cool. I, I don't, my hands are bigger, so it's kind of hard to handle smaller knives, but I do love me a small knife, you know, and the mini Griptilian is solid. I believe this one has a D2 steel. Yeah, this one has D2 steel. Which I'm a fan of D2. The 51 is D2 and it's super sharp. It seems to hold its edge for a while. Which I can't fucking sharpen knives. So whenever a knife dulls, I just get another one. So it doesn't really matter how long a knife holds its edge for, I guess. Ah, the Benchmade Bug Out. Everyone has one of these. And there's really not much more needs to be said about it. This is the Blade HQ Black version of it. The Bug Outs are super thin, like super thin, super lightweight. Like, I mean, by now everyone, everyone knows what the Bug Out is, but I used to carry this when I started my new job at the wine company, but I, I switched to the Camille's Keto just because I don't, I don't mess up an expensive knife plus the Camille's Keto was free. And we got the Benchmade, I believe it's a 530, but this is kind of like, in my opinion, the predis or the precursor to the bug out. Same sort of deal, super thin, super lightweight, um, about the same size, just a little bit different blade shape. So I would say the bug out is probably better, but the 530 looks cooler, if that makes sense. Are we losing daylight? Then we have the Benchmade Infidel. This thing is cool. It's a dagger. I've heard all sorts of cool, awesome things about this knife, but I never really can carry it because it's a, uh, a double-edged non-folding stabbing instrument since it doesn't technically fold, it just goes into the handle. And Michigan likes to freak out over stuff like that. I have the Benchmade Ruckus 2. In case you couldn't tell, I love Benchmade knives. Like Benchmade knives are my thing. If I could only have like one brand of knife in my collection, well, it'd be two. It would be Microtech and Benchmade. We'll get to the Microtechs in a second. Benchmade is awesome. I know some people don't like the, 
the Omega Springs and some of their Axis locks. And you know, people say that they're a little overpriced and yeah, Benchmades are expensive, but they make a good knife. They make a, a very unique design. Like their designs normally are, they just look cool. This I think is one from their black line, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there's all sorts of dust in there as you can see. I carry this one a lot. And this is one that I do recommend using the safety for just because the button protrudes out so far that it's really easy to hit it if the safety is off. So I would recommend using the safety on this guy. Normally I'm not a fan of safeties on knives, but this one for sure, you wanna use it. The HK Axis, they don't make their HK line anymore to my knowledge. I think HK knives are made by someone else, but this one I carried all the time back when I worked at a grocery store because fuck me, I'm poor. This is a tank of a knife. Like it, this out of all my knives, feels like one of the most solid ones. Um, super heavy, it has drilled out liners, but even with the drilled out liners, it's still a tank of a knife, so. All right, now we're getting to the cool Microtex. This was my first high-end, the Microtech Socom Elite. This one just pops open so cool, so fast. I believe the one I was gonna get actually was supposed to have the grip tape in here and then the regular Torx screws, but then they sent me the one with the carbon fiber and the Microtech proprietary screws, which kind of in the collectability aspect of it's a little more collectible, so kind of glad they sent me this one, but from the practical aspect, the other one would have been a little bit better, but you know, I wish they'd start making these SoCom Elites again because these are cool. Ah, then we have my demon knife, the Microtech Vector with the serial number 666 somewhere on the blade. See, 666 is the serial number, if you can see that. I'm like getting really close to the microphone. This is the manual Vector, um, minted in 99, 1299, I don't fucking know, but cool, cool knife that probably will never leave my collection unless I really desperately need money. And we have the Microtech LUDT, which is a side opening automatic from Microtech, which is really cool. Me like me some side opening automatics. OTFs are cool too. We'll get to those in a second. The LUDT is very nice. It's super, super springy, but the problem is when it closes, you have to give it an extra little push or else it doesn't really close all the way. So it's just something to keep mindful. You almost got to close it super fast. Like when you close it, you have to give it a quick snap. Probably one of the strongest autos I actually have. And then we have my Ultratech, my Tanto all blacked out Ultratech, which is the best version of the Ultratech, which is the one that you should get. And this has their newer style ramped button, which is a little bit easier on the finger. I mean, obviously, you know, if you do this a million times, you're gonna tear the skin off your finger, but yeah, this, this is the coolest version of the Ultratech in my opinion. And then we have my Monkey Edge exclusive frag pattern with its double edged blade, so I can't carry this sucker, but Still, very nice collection piece. I haven't really been a monkey itch for a while just because I know I'll spend all the money. A Spyderco Endura. One of the first folders I ever bought, back before I even knew how to flip folders open. The Enduras are great. Like if I had to recommend one knife to anybody, it would be an Endura or a Griptilian. And the Enduras just come in so many different flavors. Like I don't even know what they have now, but like this, we have the waved Endura. So if you want that Emerson wave, there you go. You has yourself a waved Endura and you don't have to do the stupid zip tie mod on it. These two spaces are missing because I believe those were from my Delica, which I already showed, and I'll show it again. There you go, look at, whoop, Delica. The Delica and the Spyderco Salt. And we have a paramilitary two in camo and black, which is the coolest looking version of this, except except for the other two that I'll show in a second. But this is your compression lock, which is a little, it's a little different system, but the paramilitary twos just have such a reputation for being awesome knives. And I've carried mine quite a bit and I love it. It's a good knife. That's all I have to say about it. Then we have the Yojimbo 2 Blood HQ exclusive, which this one actually has a name. It's the Kruger. And don't ask me how I got that name, but Kruger as in Freddy Kruger, but not Freddy Kruger. Maybe someday I'll tell the story. Look back on my channel for this video and you'll see when I start. Anyway, we're getting way off topic here, but the Yojimbo 2 looks cool. I kind of want a black version of it, but exclusive knives are always cool. And we have the Spyderco Sage 1 in carbon fiber, and this actually is a textured carbon fiber, which is really nice. I've had this, I mean, a lot of these knives I've got so long ago, it's ridiculous, but this one I've had forever. It feels like forever. It's a nice little suit knife. Like if I was getting dressed up, I would probably put this on. I would clip it on my pocket with a little wire pocket clip. It doesn't look super threatening. So I have my Spyderco Techno with my custom flame anno, which when I showed this to my mom when I did it like years ago, she was like, oh, I like that knife. This is like her favorite knife that I own. I, I wanted to change out the backspacer to something like copper or something, cause that blue's a little too bright, but for now, it's nice. And see, I love the tiny little knives, but they're just a little too small for my hand, like to be able to flip and use. So flip and use, not flip and use with a comma in between. Flip, comma, use. 
I pulled this out and I'm like, what the fuck is this? The Spartaco Resilience or Resistance, I can never remember. But this for a while was my carry because I've, I used to carry around a 51 all the time. And I was like, you know what? If, if I get stopped or get in trouble, not that I get in trouble, but how do you explain away a battle song? So I'm like, let me get the biggest fucking knife that Walmart sells. So if they're like, hey, where'd you get the knife from? I'll be like, I just got bought from Walmart. You know, it's like, this is a Walmart knife. This, this is like the coolest knife that Walmart used to sell. I don't know if they still sell them, but this is a beast of a knife. And for the price, like this is back before inflation went nuts, but it's it's huge it's like massive it's the bigger brother to the spider co tenacious which everyone their dog has one of these i messed that up really bad hold up everyone their dog has one of these but i haven't really been a fan of tenacious because i had one that was kind of junk and i mean obviously they're cheaper and i made a video a long time ago talking about it and i cannot flip that open to save my life there we go but it's kind of a rule if you have one of these things that you're gonna end up cutting yourself on it. I haven't yet, thankfully. So I'm gonna let it sit in the case so it doesn't, it can't hurt anybody. The ZT, I had to check, 0561. Let's flip it again. This is one of the coolest knives. Like look at look at that titanium handle, that stippling on it. It's a hinder design, so it really resembles a XM18 or maybe a 24. I don't know, someone, someone will sue me in the comments, but this actually flips pretty decent compared to the actual hinders. Like you can actually flip it open like that without any wrist action, whereas normal hinders really you can't. It's a huge knife. Like it is a recoil when you pop it open. I believe they stopped making these, unfortunately. Like every cool knife, they, they stopped making the cool ones. I have an Emerson CQC7. I cut myself really bad on this knife because I was carrying it like an absolute fucking dumbass because I had it in my left pocket like this and it opened up and when i reached down my thumb hit the uh yeah the point <laughs> and cut myself really bad plus i only have one emerson so i'm not i'm not super thrilled to fit and finish on these guys that's just my thing i, I can't say for all emersons i want to i want to get another one and try it plus the thing too is like kind of hard to tell on camera here because i can't fucking look backwards on the camera but the blade to handle ratio just seems a little like the blade's too small for the handle. So it almost, to me, it doesn't seem worth it. And plus it has titanium liners, which doesn't make sense. Like I get if you have a titanium scale, but a titanium liner is gonna wear down faster, especially so thin, I don't know. This is a Defcon Bladeworks Jungle Karambit, which I bought probably when I was drunk because it looks cool. And I think the sun's going back out. Let me turn my ISO down a bit, get some of that glare off there. It looks cool, but I wouldn't really ever carry it just because it's, Karambits are kind of stupid. They look awesome. Awesome, though. I mean, when you look at that thing, it's just, it's beautiful. It's just kind of useless, you know, like me. This thing is beautifully useless, but it's also cool, is the Paragon Warlock. It's hard to open up because it has such a unique opening system where you pinch and the handle opens up. Kind of see that? So you basically pinch and swing. I have a video on this, but they make some really cool versions of this now. Like really cool versions, they're a little pricey, but um, one of the most unique opening mechanisms on any knife. And once you get it down, it's like, it's a fun little fidget knife. Plus this thing just looks evil as fuck. So it's kind of why I got it. Piranha Bodyguard. Kind of like the Benchmade 530 that I showed earlier. Uh, just a nice little itsy bitsy teensy weensy auto super lightweight because it's aluminum and there's really not much to it I mean it weighs like an ounce or two. It's kind of stupid. It just disappears The only issue with piranhas is that everything's internal so you can't adjust the pivot. It's kind of a bummer Got a Bo Boker Kalashnikov the annoying green one It's one of the ugliest knives in the world, but I love it It kind of reminds me of like a lightsaber from uh, I think that's what they were going for like kind of trying to copy the, the Microtech Jedi line, <laughs> but it's kind of stupid. You can cut yourself on it really easy because it doesn't really go in the, the handle all the way. But I bought two of these just because I was I was insane. Now we have the pens. Let me go grab one of my other pens. All right. So this is the pen that I've carried quite a bit. A little Pete's Pirate Life, a little micro click pen. The only problem with this is it's out of ink because it's so small. It doesn't hold a lot of ink. So it's kind of a bummer. I don't know actually what pen was supposed to go there. Huh? Maybe it was this. I don't, I don't fucking know. We have my old, old Smith & Wesson tactical pen. Like this thing is... Old, old as fuck. I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. It's, it's a tactical pen. Tactical pens are just kind of a novelty, you know? I have this Chris Martin silent click pen. Hear it? You can barely hear it. This is a cool pen, although it was a little too expensive. It was like 80 or 90 bucks, which I'm like, I'm kind of past that for spending on pens, but copper and you got the carbon fiber. I mean, it's cool, but this I carried all the time when I worked at the grocery store. Is a CRKT Teo pen. As you can tell, it's all beat up. The, the threading's kind of beat up, but this one, to get it out, you have to unscrew it, flip it over, screw it back in. It just, it's such a hassle, but this, this one probably got the most pocket time out of any of the pens. It just, it's, it's just a hassle, but 
I mean, this would this would mess you up. And like that crown or the little end, eh, it's cool. It's like a Lish with signature. And we have the Hinder. I think this is the Investigator. The little spiral pattern. It looks like corkscrew or those little screw noodles that you eat. Whatever they're called, there's an official name for them. And then got the little end cap that you can actually switch out for other ones if you want. And whatever. It's cool. It's like, it's a nice little pen. I think this is one of the smallest pens that will take a Fisher Space Pen refill. So expensive though, super expensive. And then this is another Hinder pen. I can't remember the exact model on this one, but it's, it's one of their tactical pens and it's aluminum, so it's a little bit more lightweight than a copper. This actually weighs like less than the spiral copper one. And it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but it's a dark green color. So it looks cool. Um, it just looks really fugly when like, when you put the cap on it, like I'm not gonna write like that. It's, no, I'm not going to. All right, that is the first case. Case number one. How far are we into this video? Probably about 20 minutes already. All right, well, congratulations. You've been watching half an hour of this fucking shit already. I hope you're, uh, you've been entertained. If you have been entertained, hit the like button. You don't even need to subscribe, just hit the like button and share it to another knife fanatic because I don't got a sponsor for this video because nobody's fucking stupid enough to sponsor this. For good reason. But yeah, that's all I ask. If you're enjoying it, just hit the like button. It's free. It takes literally half a second. Before I'm done talking, you could hit it five times over. Thanks. This case is kind of a mess, so, like my life, it's a little bit um, less shit than the last case. So, start with some watches. Here's a, a classic Casio G-Shock. I know, super exciting. These things are bulletproof and I love them. Here's like a little Hinder Armor, Armorer's Tool. Hinder Armorer's Tool. Oh, by the way, I do have an Apple Watch. So that's what I've been wearing because when I go running, it's nice to know how high my heart rate is so it can tell me if I'm gonna die because I chug pre-workout beforehand. But yeah, what's that hair doing there? What we got here? Oh, here's just some random parts and scales and stuff for my hinder and, and whatnot, just for the pandemic hinder that I had. Uh, some more hardware for hinders. Two bezels for my Serge Pachinko, Serge Pachinko um, Model 1 watch, which is right here. It's not ticking, obviously, because it's been sitting in the, the case for a while, but I have the skull bezel around it. This is the Model 1 by Serge Pachinko. Heavy, heavy ass little watch, chunky, but it's really cool because it's it's a square watch. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of the uh, Apple Watch. But I do have a full video on this if you want to check it out. It's somewhere on my channel. I don't, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I've given up. Here we go, Blue Box Toolkit. I think I got this for free, actually, from Dragon's Cube, because I bought so much shit. There's a Zealous Mako 500. Now we gotta turn this back up. What the fuck, man? Zealous Mako 500 in bronze. This this was a daily beater watch for a while for me. And it's it's patinaed pretty pretty good, as you can tell, on the back. I used to have it on a rubber strap, and I, uh, I changed it to the, the brown leather, which I think just looks a lot cooler. Zealous makes some really cool watches, and this one has a meteorite dial, and that clicky clicky bezel and all that fun stuff. Then we have another one of their Makos and with the green dial, which is kind of hard to see on camera, but this is the stainless, stainless version. This is probably the, the nicest watch I have. At least the coolest looking. It looks the most like a Submariner, which I would love to get a Submariner in green, but it, I'm not paying $10,000 for a watch. Maybe eventually I will, but I ain't. A Citizen Nighthawk. This is one of the coolest looking watches. I was telling my dad about this the other day because I'm just like, this thing is awesome. I haven't worn it for a while, but this was my daily watch for so long. It, it looks a little bit big, but it doesn't wear big just because it doesn't have the bezel. So that's what makes it look a lot bigger because it has such a, a big face, a watch face, but it doesn't have a bezel around it. So it doesn't wear like a huge watch. So, and plus it's cool, like from far away, you know, you get the, the big bold markers, but then the closer you get, I shove it all the way up there, you get all the, the cool little stuff and the slide ruler and all that, all the fun jazz. This is gonna make some good watches. Oh, here we go, I have the Guard Fodder OTF Spike. I have to find something to compress it on. This thing I would never recommend carrying because uh, it, it's, there's no reason to carry this. It's an ice pick. Yeah, right. It's a fucking self-defense tool. They're cheap. They'll get you in trouble, I'm sure, but it's just cool to have in the collection. Something that's not cool to have in the collection <laughs> is the Amazon basic knife because I'd seen Amazon made a knife and I had to have it. And uh, it's it's not great, really. You know, I just thought it was funny that Amazon, Amazon gets into everything. I have an Amazon guitar pedal. I'm just like, for fuck's sake, Amazon, just stay out of everything. Although Amazon does make good shirts. Like Amazon's clothing line is really good. As weird as that is. 
it fits me like perfect. This is actually a gift from my brother, which shows you how much he cares about me. He bought me like the smallest knife that you could possibly get, but it's, it's a little Spyderco bug. I probably never would have bought one of these on my own just because and I, I, I should have, but they're, they're so tiny and so cute, but you could literally use this as like the lanyard bead for a knife. It's kind of ridiculous. This is the CRKT. I cannot honestly remember the name of it. Um, oh, Nurk tie. Yeah, it's the green Nurk tie. When I saw that they were coming out in the green one of these, I just had to have it because uh, my brother has the blue one and they're really cool. Like they, they got such a cool design, like the inside's colored and all sorts of fun stuff, but um, I didn't really like the blue, but then when I saw they coming out with a green one, I'm like, yep. And see, it's like an integral, 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 whatever the fuck it is, um, lockback, but it's, it's cool. And they're lightweight too, because they're mainly drill out, so. And that kind of matches my Zealous watch. The green and green, like this would be a good pair. Good pair to go together. Oh yeah. So I have, I had to have an Ozark trail knife. The $1 Ozark trail knife. Honestly, I felt worse. Frost Cutlery has some worse knives than this. This is up there though on bad knives. I think I made a video on it, like a whole video talking about it, but it does flip, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, this is the knife that you get if you know absolutely nothing about knives. And after using this, you will know a bunch about knives knowing not to get this because it's not, it's not good. But it's just, it's kind of funny to have in the collection. All right, what we got here? We got two. These were really hard to get because when I got the Blade HQ drop, I'm not sure if they've released them after that, but these are the paramilitary twos in Tanto. And I got two, one in each color. So I got a black one and I got the normal stone wash or whatever it is. They were kind of tricky to get. It was like around Christmas of some year. I love Tanto knives, so I had to get them. I carried this one a little bit, but I, I'm not really a fan of pocket clip screws and spider coats. I've destroyed so many pocket clip screws and that's why this one is still tipped down and this guy is tip up because I was able to switch this one, but then I almost stripped these guys out. So I was like, I'm not risking it, but yeah. I might've actually stripped this one. They might've actually had to send me some other screws, but they're cool looking. I mean, I I've fallen away from Tantos though because Tantos are kind of useless. Someone's gonna fight me on that, but I, I prefer like a good drop point blade or, you know, something like that. This is the Boker Quake and the Blade HQ exclusive in copper and carbon fiber, which is one of the coolest looking knives in the world. And I have two, I have a second one somewhere. Oh, right down here. Yeah, there's a second brand new one just because I, I was buying knives and twosies for a while, but this one's really cool. You can cut yourself on it though because the, the blade kind of protrudes out the back. So if you rub your finger along it, you're gonna end up cutting yourself, but really cool flipper, really slim knife. Quakens for a while were really big. They still might be, but yeah, I had to get two of them. And we have the Protec Godson with the absolute coolest looking inlay there. That is just the coolest inlay and being an automatic. This is one of the coolest knives. I don't really carry it, but as far as visuals go, I love that copper inlay. Like me and copper are just like, mm, I love me some copper. It's a collection piece. As the great toy reviewer, the late great toy reviewer, I don't know what the fuck happened to him. Nobody probably even knows who he is, but would say it's a collection filler. My brain went dead. I'm not really sure the name of this guy right now. It's a Kershaw. No, it's a Kershaw. <laughs> It's, it's a Kershaw something. My, my brain's dead right now. Too much caffeine. This guy, it, it's a snappy little guy. Kershaw Nexus? No, it's not the Nexus. I can't remember the name of it. It starts with an N, I think. Copper knives are always cool. I kind of got all my copper knives in the second case here. See, the CRKT Squid and Copper. It's a little squiddy. This is a cool knife. It's just too small for my hands, really. But um, some guy on Instagram told me about it. He's like, hey, you know CRKT has a copper one coming out. I'm like, no, I didn't, but I have to buy one. This SOG Aegis was my EDC for a long time. This is back when I had my first job at fast food restaurant. I, I know when I got these knives by like what job I had. It's kind of ridiculous. The SOG Aegis is still one of the best knives because it's so lightweight and like, spring assisted. It's it's still a great knife. I don't believe that they make this version anymore though, which is kind of sad. They make some new fugly looking one, but, and they have the aluminum, aluminum one. That's like super cheap and it's not assisted and it's a liner lock, which works fine. Like it's it's good and like it has a really good blade shape, which is kind of the strong point of the Aegis, but like it's a lot heavier and it doesn't have the cool factor because it doesn't, it's not spring assisted, but. Here's an iconic knife, at least for me and my family. It's a cold steel tie light. It's just, it's such a cool knife. It pops open so fast. I've had this thing literally forever. Like I've had it forever. And it's just such a cool and unique knife. And it has the uh, the, wa the wave feature. I know nothing fancy doesn't like it, but it's just, in my opinion, it's an iconic blade. Cold Steel Pro Light, because it was super cheap. In Tanto, back when I was on a Tanto kick. It was like, I think under 20. Cold Steel makes some good beater knives. Like if you need a hardcore beater knife, get a Cold Steel. Ah, the Kershaw Cryo. For a while, everybody and their dog had to get one of these. They were like the Walmart knife to get. Cause they're good. Like the spring assisted, 
They were fairly cheap back then. They're probably super expensive now, but it's a good knife. It has your lock bar stabilizer there, so you can't over travel it and all sorts of fun jazz. I love the color too. The gray color on it's really cool. You don't see too many knives with this this specific gray coating and coloration. And then you have to get the uh, the rainbow leak just because it's this is shiny as fuck and this is like a factory second or something but it's still it's, it's like it's 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 the most obnoxious knife in my whole collection and i love it i never carried i think i carried it like one time because it's literally like a mirror it's a rainbow mirror it's just fun to have then a little kershaw hot wire this thing actually was pleasantly surprising because it's like a ten dollar knife from walmart and actually it's pretty good like it pops open fast you know, flipper assisted opening. Um, got some pretty decent blade shape, nice handles, a little cheaper feeling, but it's like 10 bucks from Walmart, at least it was. So not the greatest of pocket clips, but I believe I made a video on this a long time ago. And this is some sort of Emerson, Kershaw Emerson collaboration. I can't remember the exact model on this, the CQC. I don't know, I, it's something. I have a second one of these somewhere. It's like a tiny little wave. They made like a whole line with Kershaw or Emerson made a line with Kershaw of like these more affordable wave knives, which is pretty cool. Knife collaborations are kind of kind of cool. Ah, this thing is iconic. The CRKT M16 10KZ. I still remember this because this was one of the, did dust just fall out of that? Fucking dust just fell out of it. What the hell, man? Look at this. Dust. This thing I got so long ago, back when I was playing Battlefield 2, like legit Battlefield 2. Like it was, it was awesome. Those were the good old days, but still one of the best flippers. I love the way this feels when it flips open. It's just, it's ridiculous. It, it's still a cool knife. And I think they still make the uh, M16. So I have to, uh, does that scare you? Is this scaring you? I have to see if uh, they have some newer models of this because the M16s are, they're really cool. They flip really good and me happy. Huh. The uh, CRKT Hiho. Assisted opening little katana thing that actually has recoil. You can feel it ringing when you open it up. This has the the lock system on the back there. Manually engage it, and then it will keep you from closing the knife. Whereas the M16 10KZ has an auto locks, which I'm more of a fan of the auto locks because you don't have to think about it. But I get where some people don't want it. Here's the Walmart Ripple. I've cut myself pretty badly on this knife before. Um, this was the CRKT Ripple that Walmart sold. It was a little cheaper version of it. I believe the original Ripples were frame locks and this was a liner lock. It still works pretty good. And it was like half as much as the regular Ripples, but I kind of wish I would have got one of the uh, the original Ripples, but still this one was fun. CRKT Drifter, man, these are some classic knives here. This was a fairly cheap, affordable CRKT option. I don't know really what CRKT offers anymore. I haven't really checked out their, their lineup recently. It's just a good little beater knife. Like a lot of these are just kind of tiny little beater knives in here, but they serve their purpose. Um, This one does not serve any purpose. It's the CRKT Persian, which is almost impossible to open up. It was like the first knife that I got hyped about it coming out. Like I'd seen it and I'm like, I want this knife. I got it. I'm like, I don't want this knife. It has no pocket clip. It's thumb studs are terrible. It's just, it's, it's not a good knife, but it looked kind of cool. But then I got it. I'm just like, this is, no, it's not a good knife. I have it, so it looks like some sort of like something from Persia. That's kind of what it is, CRKT Persian. Case. This is like my first and only case knife. It's a Stockman, which I feel like Stockmans are the best sort of classic slip joint that you can get. I believe this is a medium Stockman. It's cool, but I'm not a grandpa, so I don't really carry it. If I was going to, to carry a classic type slip joint, it would be a case Stockman. It's a Victor Knox. Um, it's the a I, I It got the aluminum skills. I can't remember the exact model number because I, I, I have better stuff to fucking remember than knife model names. These are super thin. They're good. Like if you want a very thin, thin um, Victor Knox, or just a pocket knife that's not gonna scare anybody, they're, they're probably the best one you can get. Cause you don't feel like you just have that classic red Swiss army knife. You know, it's, it's something a little bit higher end. Um, or here's another one of the um, thingies, the, the Tinkerer, which these are about 20 bucks. I'd recommend probably getting one of these or the Alox. You know, if you're looking for just a standard sort of Victor Knox knife that doesn't look like the red one that everybody and their dog has, or like a tiny little one. The little classic. This is like my first knife that I got. So it's, uh, I carry this one forever. The blade's all gunked up. You can see I haven't really cleaned it just because it's, this was my first knife. So somehow I haven't lost it, which is ridiculous. It should have a better place in my collection than like down here. Huh. Kershaw Launch 4, back when I thought I was gonna move to California. I'm so glad I didn't move to California. Fuck California. It's a tiny little auto, sub two inches, so you're really not gonna get in trouble with it. Maybe a little scary. Still snappy, snappy little auto. This is the little Boker Subcom that I got I, it was for free. I, I think Blade HQ sent it to me for free for some reason. They're just like, we feel bad for you. You're poor. You spend so much money on our website. Here, take a free knife. This is a little Ganzo. Man, my watch is just going off constantly today. This is a little Ganzo automatic that I actually bought from eBay because for some reason you can buy auto knives off eBay. It's kind of funny, but 
This thing weighs a ton. Like I wish I had a scale that could weigh this because it this weighs so much. It's just like solid stainless steel liners. It's like not liners, like just the handles are solid stainless steel G10. It's like and the action on it is so slow. It's like such a slow knife. I'm surprised it even opens up, but it was like 20 bucks. And like I said, I got it off eBay, so it was kind of funny. There's a Schrade Viper. Back when the uh, out the front assisted knives were kind of a thing. Um, it's one handed, which is kind of cool. You know, and for a while, like this is the only sort of assisted or the only sort of OTF knife that you could legally carry or buy. It's just a little too eh, obnoxious. It has a little safety and stuff. It's a little too cheesy. But I wanted one just to have it in the collection. This, what is it, the Ravencrest Tactical? I, I bought this just because I was super curious. And these, these knives, I don't know if you can hear it. It's such a cheap sounding OTF. It, the fit and finish kind of sucks. I want to say I have a video of me taking this apart and it's, it feels like the finish is painted on. I would not recommend Ravencrest Tactical knives at all. Like your money is better spent elsewhere. Unless you absolutely are poor. Oh, here's a, here's a Boker. Boker trainer? I think it's Boker. Yeah, Boker Magnum, little butterfly trainer, which is fairly decent, like for learning tricks and stuff. It's not, um, it's not the best trainer. It's not super expensive, so it does feel kind of cheap, but like you can just mess around with it and you're not gonna hurt yourself, which is kind of, kind of point. Like you can see, I know absolutely nothing on these, but like if you're trying for an aerial or something, you know, get something like this first so you can at least kind of get the, the motion and the movement down. Oh, I almost cut myself on this guy. It's a little cleaver, it's a little Damascus cleaver. I forgot there's no sheath for this, so almost sliced my finger open, but I, there's no reason the user carried this. You really can't carry it. It's just, it was just a cool little thing I got around like the holidays. I took some pictures with it, but cool, cool little knife though. Not really gonna use it for anything. I think it's probably starting to actually rust almost because haven't really done much to it. This, so I have a, I have a video I still need to make on this. I made a video on it, then I believe I privated it because this is the Euro Ballast Song, the one, um, butterfly knife. It, there's kind of a, a thing and a story behind it. I, I yeah, I, I need to finish my my investigation into this company. I have a message on Instagram from them that I haven't read yet. It's kind of a long story, but I will probably now that I'm back to making YouTube videos, I'll get into it one of these days when I get time. Yeah, it's kind of a Benchmade 51 knockoff. So and we'll leave it at that for right now. This is some knife I bought at Myers too. It's a mossy oak. It's like a, a fake Damascus. <laughs> like it's, it's the cheapest, chintziest looking thing in the world. But I just, I, I like to buy some of these cheaper knives just to be like, this is what a piece of fucking shit feels like. This thing, a knife that's not a piece of shit is the Civivi Elementium in copper. I know I made a video on this a while ago. Super cool knife and like for the price, very smooth, flips open really fast, cool blade shape, sharp can get in a bunch of different varieties. And like this um, this one that already pre-worn copper is just like, it's one of the coolest looking ones. I think they have like a, uh, a bronze that you can get. I wanna say you can also get it now without the pre-worn copper, which I would probably recommend getting the non-pre-worn copper just because the pre-worn, like it doesn't have as much character to it, but that's just my opinion. And we have two of these, two of these guys, which are the Civivi. I can't remember the exact model on these though. They're made by Civivi, but they're actually full-size slip joints. So as you see, they kind of lock open. They're like a, a massive, massive slip joint, which is really cool. Cause if you're in an area that doesn't like locking blades, you can get these and they're fairly affordable. I'm sure that they still make them. I think I made a video called not your grandpa's slip joint. And this was, that, that's what the video was. So you can go check that out, but they are, they are really cool. Um, like I said, if you need a non-locking, like full size knife, cause certain areas like the fucking UK, you can't have a uh, locking knife. So, and here's the, the other one was Bokers, the uh, Boker Clash and Clubs, and I already showed you this, the, uh, whatever it was, the Boker Quaken. Then we have the biggest knife that I own, which is a Cold Steel Voyager. A massive, this is like, I think the XL Tanto. I got this back when I was like, I need to carry something other than a firearm, but you know, like I couldn't carry a gun, but I'm like, I need a knife for self-defense. So I bought this and this thing is just excessive. Like you would get in more trouble carrying this than you would if you had a gun on you. So, but still it's kind of cool to have. It's like, it's, it's just so excessively large and like you can open it up just with gravity. Like it's, it's ridiculous. You have to be careful not to accidentally cut your leg off with this thing though. And uh, yeah, I think that's it.